Jamal. Two balls and a strike to count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. It's his way back. Walk him out. What's up, everybody? Happy Monday to you. Welcome to Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined this morning by Matt Moreno, editor over at DodgerBlue.com. And Matt, if people have been disappointed, I mean, there is a report from John Heyman that is absolutely going to change the trajectory of their day today. Dodgers linked to pitcher Seth Lugo. Padres also in the mix. Nationals potentially. Heyman saying it's kind of down to those two teams, though. The Dodgers and Padres primarily. Uh, something to get excited about here? <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know about necessarily excited, but I will say he would be kind of a needed piece. And I think what's interesting with all this is uh, when the Dodgers were first linked to Seth Lugo, it was with the, not the caveat, but the qualifier of they're looking at him as a starting pitcher, which... Mm-hmm fans you know might remember him most recently as being a relief pitcher with the Mets and then it came out uh, before this sandwich in between that and Heyman's latest report that Seth Lugo was looking to sign with a team that would let him start and so I think that's a little interesting because if as you look at it right now the Dodgers technically have five starters uh, with Noah Syndergaard obviously now official but like we've discussed I mean I, I think more so than you they still need depth in the rotation it's just so it's just gonna be curious to see if he does sign how that sort of shakes out yeah because you know the five starters and you and I hash this out on our Sunday night long show so people can go watch that for more it's five plus the question marks of the young guys I think Pepio Grove uh, Miller and Stone I think would be the four and obviously Andre Jackson maybe as well so how you figure out what you think you can expect out of those guys probably plays a role in kind of whether or not you need Seth Lugo, but you you mentioned it. I mean, this is a guy who hasn't started in the last two seasons. He's made 108 appearances the last two years, all of them in relief. Um, He made seven starts in 2020. He made zero starts in 2019. He made five starts in 2018. He hasn't been a full-time starter since 2017 when 18 of his 19 starts, uh, 19 appearances, excuse me, were starts. It's also worth mentioning those years in which he was entirely or primarily a reliever were all of his best years. So 2018, 49 relief appearances, five starts, 2.66 ERA. 2019, 61 appearances, zero starts, 2.7 ERA. 2020, half of his appearances are starts, 5.15 ERA. Last two years, 3.5 and 3.6 ERA. So it is interesting there. Now, what's what makes sense, I think, for the Dodgers is to put him in what I'm going to call the Tyler Anderson role because it's the role Anderson started in, which was the sixth starter, kind of a piggyback guy with Gonsolin where he was going to give you three, four, five innings maybe out of the bullpen. And then if you needed a starter, he could slide in. I think that's where there's value for the Dodgers, but it just comes down to all of that said, do you like actually Seth Lugo, the player? I mean, I get for the right terms, I guess, right? Like if this ends up being another one year contract, I could be talked into it. I will say what is a little concerning is even, you know, well, two things. One is like you mentioned the last time he was a full-time starter was in 2017. And that was only 18, like it was only 18 starts. Like we're not looking at a guy that made, you know, 30 starts or even 25 that year i'd have to go back and look at maybe the specifics actually what i do remember because it ties into now my second point is uh he's pitching with a partially torn ucl and that started in i'm pretty sure that was discovered in 2017 yeah that doesn't help that doesn't help um and, and i would say too even like just the performance as well like you're looking at a guy so okay can he stay healthy can he give you length And then to your point, it becomes what's the cost and what's the performance? I agree. I think if he wants to start, it's probably going to be on like a one-year deal where he can establish himself as a starting pitcher and then hopefully try and go get starting pitcher money a year from now. Of course, if the Dodgers sign him, they're not going to be guaranteeing him all those starts, but they're going to say, hey, look at our history. Like We've got four of our five starting pitchers that we're not expecting to combine for 100 starts this year. And so there's going to be plenty of opportunities for you. Looking at his actual numbers, uh, 3.6 ERA last season, 3.46 expected ERA, 3.76 FIP. Those are all good. Fastball, 94 and a half miles an hour. Now, that's as a reliever. So as a starter, does that dip a little bit? Um, A solid more than a strikeout per inning. Walk rate, two and a half. That was um, a a better mark than he had in 2021. You look at the stat cast stuff, 86th percentile for hard hit rate. On the flip side, 33rd percentile for barrel rate, 28th percentile for whiff rate, 1st percentile for chase rate. 
99th percentile for curve spin. So I always try and look when the Dodgers are going after a guy. Like, is there one thing he's elite at? 99th percentile for curveball spin. So clearly, I would guess the Dodgers look at that and say, we can tap into this. We can maximize this. It, all of that said, Matt, I mean, what's the number? Like, is $8 million too much for Seth Lugo? Is it $6.5 million? Is it $10 million? Like, this is a guy who, you know, he hasn't necessarily been a high leverage reliever. He's He's been a fine reliever. 65 innings last year, you know, three and a half ERA. But what's the number where you would feel, feel comfortable on a one-year deal? I think I'd have to maybe cap it at about eight million, just because yeah. if then you need to also then sort of start comparing him to okay, Syndergaard got thirteen million, Tyler Anderson. I mean, frankly, you, poor Tyler Anderson. He <laughs> clearly signed way too early, but yeah. you know he wanted to get out ahead and just secure uh, his contract and you know not have to worry about the off season. So I think eight, maybe nine million for the year. But if you start to go you know more than that, then I'm going to wonder, hey, like what other options? Could potentially get like does it make sense for to spend that much on your kind of six maybe even seven starter yeah because there are other starting pitchers out there you know even veteran type guys like Johnny Cueto I know is a guy that's floating around and it's like I mean would you rather do a, a Seth Lugo experiment where maybe you think the upside is higher the ceiling is higher and you know more of what you're going to get from him out of, as a reliever versus but it's as, as a starter, it's a lot more of a question mark. So I'm with you. I think like one year, $8 million, uh, you wouldn't get too many complaints out of me. Obviously, lower would be better. But Dodgers, Padres, Nationals, all in the mix, according to John Heyman. So we shall see. Uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, Seth Lugo, that get your blood blood pressure going a little bit? Get the heart pumping? Get you excited about the 2023 Dodgers? I think I know the answer, but leave those comments below. As I mentioned, Matt and I did a full-length Dodger Heads last night. Please go check it out. It was a good one. It was a fun one talking about Syndergaard, J.D. Martinez, the loss of Justin Turner, and then kind of spending a lot of time asking the question, is there another bat needed for the Dodgers? Is there another arm needed for the Dodgers as well? Uh, you can also check us out on social media. Matt Moreno's got his Twitter handle there, mine as well. Uh, I posted a two-minute video from last night's show that I think kind of sum up why I'm not panicking about the Dodgers, why I'm a little optimistic, and, and I find compelling even the approach that the Dodgers have right now. So check that out as well. We appreciate you as always. And of course, go Dodgers.